So, I'm happy to see so many of you here tonight, especially given the circumstances that we're in on this day. And when you look at this, these circumstances from the perspective of what we do here, from the perspective of this practice of meditation that we've been involved with and these teachings that we have been involved with, it really presents us with an opportunity to, to notice something that is not as easy to notice under ordinary circumstances. And what I mean is that, as I have often said here when talking about why we should meditate and why these teachings have value and why it's important that we give attention to these teachings and practices, is because of the fact that the world that we live in is unstable. The personality is unstable. The weather is unstable. Politics are unstable. Our physical well-being is unstable. All that comes and goes. Everything that's changing, the mind is unstable. The emotions are unstable. Nothing stays the same. And the reality of it is that the, the life that we are experiencing with its instability is presenting us constantly with threat. The unpredictability of what's gonna happen next. The concern about our welfare and our security. And even under ordinary circumstances when there is nothing in our face like there is now, these things are all true, but it's easier to sleep through it then. You know, it's easier to to stay in the everyday patterns that we go through and look forward to Christmas and look forward to the new car and look forward to whatever there is that we're looking forward to next and kind of living in this bubble that reality tends to occur for people. And so we just go through the motions every day again and again, continuing to seek small forms of gratification, continuing to feel that we have gotten through another day without anything serious happening. But the reality of it is that those who are serious practitioners of meditation and of these practices are serious practitioners because they recognize that this reality is a fraud. It's fraudulent. It's talked about in many spiritual circles as being an illusion. It's talked about in terms of that we're dreaming. And a lot of the times it's not a good dream. So it's the recognition of the truth of that. It's the recognition of not just what's happening now, but what's happening now is actually happening all the time. We just don't pay attention to it. We go on and ignoring it. We ignore reality. We ignore the truth. And that's one of the reasons as time passes and we get older, it starts to get harder and harder to ignore the truth. There's no way to avoid it because part of the truth is your own mortality that you'll die. And as they say in the Buddhist teachings, you know, that these inevitable forms of suffering will happen. You know, you will age, you will get sick, you will die. And what will happen day to day, moment to moment is not a given, it's unpredictable. As I often say, you don't know how old you are unless you know when you're gonna die. If you're going to die this year, you're old. So the point of doing these practices and the point of paying attention to these teachings is because what they offer us is a way to 
be free. That's what, the, when we talk about in these teachings and practices freedom, we're talking about freedom from suffering. And the suffering that the freedom offers us from is the, the, the suffering of being stuck with a limited identity, being stuck with an erroneous version of reality, being stuck in the mind, being stuck in the body, being stuck in time. And these teachings actually say that this illusion can be resolved. It is possible to, to actually see and recognize that time isn't real, that, the re that in reality your life will ever only happen in the present moment. This is what's called the truth. And the truth never changes. And the truth that never changes is the reality of who you and I are that is not physical, that didn't begin when the body was born and won't end when the body dies. These teachings can be found in the mystical forms of Christianity. They can be found in the Kabbalah from the Jewish standpoint. They can be found in most of the Eastern traditions. And so this is a real possibility and a real opportunity to begin to learn about a way to be free from this suffering that is inevitable unless you wake up from the dream. And it is not an easy process because of the conditioning, even if you see, and as I've said here before, the first step to freedom, the first step to be free from the suffering that is inevitable for a human being is to recognize the truth of who you are. And while on the one hand, it, that's the easiest possible thing you could do because you already are who you are, the awareness that you are is already the case. And so how hard could it be to be what you already are? That's like me telling you to be seated right now. How hard can it be to be what you already are? And yet, as obvious as that may seem, it's very difficult to be who you already are because since you learned language and since you participated in the society that we live in, you've been conditioning to believe that you are your body, to believe that you are a personality, to believe all the other things that go along with conditioning, you know, to believe in time, to believe that uh, happiness is a function of what you have, right? Like money or power or security. To believe many things that are actually not true. And then it leaves us in a situation where we become part of the rat race. We become part of the, 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 the herd that's running off a cliff right now. We become part of the herd that continues to seek temporary gratification, even though the message in the temporary gratification is that it doesn't work. Everything that you seek to be happy ends up failing. And so there comes a time, if you're fortunate, that you see things as they are and you realize that this, if there is a possibility to experience happiness, if there is a possibility to not suffer, if there's a possibility to realize that this life is an opportunity for fulfillment, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, right? He maketh me to sit by still waters. What that's saying is that this life is intended for you to experience well-being and fulfillment. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. This is talking about the possibility, because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What's that mean? Right? It means that there is a way to transcend this limited reality, this illusionary reality, this mirage, 
and begin to live in the truth, to begin to be who you actually are and experience the well-being and the peace and the happiness and the freedom of that. And when that's the experience, then all of these things that come and go, all of these changing and unstable things can be seen for what they are, and you don't invest yourself in them anymore. You accept that this is the inevitable aspect of being in a human life. But it becomes possible to experience yourself as the stillness, as the space, as the awareness that never changes, that never moves, that doesn't suffer. And so just like somebody who is participating in a dramatic play and has a certain role as an actor in the play, you give yourself to the drama, you give yourself to the play, you understand that this is a play, that this is something that is not actually real and so you can enjoy the trip you can enjoy the experience of doing it because you know who you really are all the time no matter who you're playing no matter what the role you're playing is in the play and from the view of being who you are it becomes possible to see that the seriousness of all this is not what it seems that at a scale beyond what we can see with the limited view that we have, at a scale beyond what we can see, there's something happening here that does have meaning and does have purpose. And it may be that the purpose and the meaning that it has is simply for us to recognize the truth. How could we recognize the truth unless there was an opportunity to ignore it? So I'm suggesting to you, and you know, I'm preaching to the choir again, you know, because you guys have been coming to this class on a regular basis, but I want to keep emphasizing that even when situations arise like this, whether it's a political situation that's scary, whether it's a, a, a the condition that you find your body in that's scary, which will happen, right? Can, when these things occur, can you go to the truth? Can you shift your attention away from the agitated mind, shift your attention away from your fear, shift your attention to the stillness that's always available, that is the truth of who you are, and allow yourself to notice that the, there, the peace that's there is never threatened. It goes back to that quote that I mentioned here from time to time from the Course in Miracles that is supposed to be the summary of the entire course, which says that what is real cannot be threatened. And what is unreal doesn't exist. And therein lies the peace of God. So that's what's available. If you're living in the reality of the truth, if you're living as who you actually are, then all of these things that appear before you, all these things that are occurring around you, are not threatening because you see that they're not real. But that's not going to happen by itself. You've got to be willing to go through the process of deconstructing the idea you have about who you are through the processes of beginning to see that the thoughts that play in your mind, the voice in your head, is not you. And to be able to learn to see through those un insubstantial thoughts to what's beyond that, to the reality that's beyond that. So it's often the case when I interact with people about the truth of who we are that people answer, respond, and say, oh, yeah, what I'm, I, I understand what you're saying. It makes sense to me. It fits, you know, it fits other things that I understand. I do want that experience. 
but it just doesn't seem to be there for me. I'm, I feel confused. I feel lost. I get frustrated because I keep trying. I'm meditating. I'm listening. I'm reading. And the thing that I say when that is the response that I get is everything you're saying when you say that, you're saying because those are the thoughts that are occurring in your mind and you're not seeing beyond those thoughts. Because while those thoughts are occurring in your mind, the only way you can know they're occurring is by being the awareness of those thoughts. And instead of giving attention to the awareness, which is the source, which is the truth, which is what you are, we keep falling into the trap of identifying with the thoughts, thinking the thoughts, speaking the thoughts, as if that's all there is. So while somebody is saying, I'm trying, I'm frustrated, I want this, and I, you know, so forth and so on, while they're saying it, the awareness is right there. All you have to do is stop referring to the thinking as the way to know what's going on and look at the awareness that's aware of the thinking. I've seen teachers interact directly with students about this and I've seen teachers when a student was talking about how they were trying and they're not getting this and, the, and I've seen teachers actually scream at the student, just stop. And the student did just stop and look and see what's here, what is here. And then they, they broke out laughing and realized, what? This? You mean this? 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 Is that what you're referring to? That, that which is always here, it's always been here? That's it? And that's really it. It is that simple. So if you know that, right, then can you recognize what I'm pointing to when I say there's an awareness there that's not those thoughts? And you see, if you give attention to that awareness, what you will begin to discover if you give it attention consistently, and this is what the practice of meditation is all about, if you give it consistent attention, you'll begin to realize it's been behind what's been going on all along. It is the source of information, infinite information. It is the source of wisdom. The mind is, is a very in, a, a, a inferior, limited version of, of consciousness, of awareness. And I want to be clear with you that I'm not saying that there's, there's two, that you know, there's the you that you think you are, and there's the mind, and then there's awareness. No. Awareness is all there is. The personality and the mind is a very limited version of awareness that has come into time and space and come into the world in order to experience the human life. That's had to, had to be that way. You, you had to forget the truth of what you were in order to be here in the world as a human being and operate in this reality. You, you had to be that way. You had to be able to experience living through the senses and experiencing yourself as a human body and so forth. Everybody passes through that process. The, the problem with humanity, the problem with the human kingdom is we don't realize that's not the end of the process. First you, first you, you come into the human life and you, you, you mature as a human being and you come to an understanding about how to be a decent human being, how to function in the world of time and space, right? But then the next thing, and, in, and unless you get to the next phase, you just suffer. And the purpose of the suffering is to motivate you to move on to the next phase. And if you move, move on to the next phase, then you realize the truth of yourself. And when you realize the truth of yourself, you don't lose anything. This is one of the things that people fear. Well, if I, if I become what I really am as awareness itself, and that's not physical, and that's eternal, and that doesn't exist in time and space, what will happen to me, right? Well, who's speaking that fear, right? 
That fear is coming from the limited idea you have of yourself that is nothing other than the awareness itself that had manifested in a limited form. So there's nothing to be afraid of. You can let go. And if you do let go and pay attention, you'll notice the wisdom that begins to express itself through you. You'll begin to notice the miraculous things that can occur in your life by letting go and trusting. You know, they say this in Christian terms, thy will rather than my will, you know, let go. Give, give your limited pea shooter brain up and allow that the unlimited wisdom and unlimited information to flow through you and to allow you to see things in the light of awareness, especially right now, see things in the light of awareness and understand that this is all for the purpose, all of these things that are happening are for the purpose of stimulating us to move on to the third phase of life, awake, to wake up to who we are so that we can experience the fulfillment of the possibility of a human life. See, the fulfillment of the possibility of human, uh, human life is to realize that to exist is where your happiness comes from. Existence itself is an experience of happiness. But you see, in the conditioned state that most of us are living our life in, the fact that you exist, right, the fact that most people exist doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. You know, that's not that big of a deal. Most people actually complain about it, don't they? Most, see, that shows you how backwards it is. Most people complain about the most precious, miraculous aspect of their life, which is that they exist. See, so if you get back to that and you wake up in the morning and you have an appreciation and you experience gratitude for the gift that you have of existing itself, then happiness is immediately available to you. Then you win the game first and then play. You don't go to the party to have fun, you bring the fun. Everything becomes different, everything looks different. So I hope that you use the opportunity that the next days and weeks are gonna make available to look and see who you are and to experience the stillness and the silence and the calmness and the peace and the well-being of your true nature. And know that you can relax. This will all work itself out. Be yourself for a while and see, see, see what happens. You may be surprised. You know, be, you may be surprised because the reality of it is when you, when you are the experience of who you really are, when you are experiencing the truth of yourself, there is, there is no others. There is only that. Remember, you remember us talking about the fact that when you get, when you see the truth that awareness is what you are, that is the same awareness that everyone else is too, right? Therefore, there are no others. There's just, there's just you. So, I hope to see you guys again on Thursday at six o'clock so that we can continue to be a community here and keep supporting one another to stay awake. Have a good evening. <laughs>